So this is me, Corey Calhoun, crossword puzzle and puzzle guy for the Comet. Um, going to attempt to show you a brainstorming session. This is really not planned at all. I was going to try to come up with some ideas maybe ahead of time on how I would do this, but I'm just going to brainstorm something here. So this will be part of the whole process, <laughs> hopefully, of creating a crossword puzzle. Hopefully it won't be too boring. Um, I'm wearing my Bob Ross camp shirt to try to um, keep things lively. So if you get bored of hearing me talk, got Bob there and his squirrel. Anywho, um, so let's get started. I am going to, oftentimes, when I have an idea, um, I will just start typing words, actually. Um, I'll just start spitballing things, eh, so to speak. And I think what I'm going to do here is, I also use, I love to use, the number one thing I love to use is actually um, Microsoft Notepad. Um, it is no formatting text-wise. It's just like pure pen and paper, except my I type faster than I write, so it's a good place for me to just kind of get all my uh, ideas out quickly. Um, but I think in this uh, interesting time with COVID-19 happening that I wanted to have a puzzle all about um, being peaceful and uh, finding your inner calm, finding your inner, inner peace and relaxing, but trying to have a fun spin on that. Oftentimes I will use Google or other search engines just to look for different ideas and things like that. So let's start. I'm just going to type. I just start with keywords, key, words that I think might be interesting. Um, inner peace, which actually can be very interesting because there's a lot of puzzle options you can do where you have, um, you know, you can conceal a word in the center of it. If you've ever done a puzzle, whether you hide a word within the letters of um, either a single long answer or if there's two or three words within that long answer. Other times you can do what's called a rebus puzzle where you cram an entire word or phrase or whatever into a single square. And so you have to figure that out. If you're ever doing the puzzle and you, you do an answer and you're like, oh, gee, I don't, why, you know, the, the answer I think it should be won't fit in all these squares. And you have to figure out which one actually has more than one letter in it. So inner peace is interesting. Let's actually do that. Let's do that. Let's try for a puzzle maybe that involves taking either the word peace or the letters um, for words that mean peace could fit inside something else. So I can think of Zen, calm, uh, relaxation. Again, we're not necessarily using all these words, um, but what I will do, and I often just shamelessly do this, thesaurus.com. <laughs> That's your friend if you're trying to think of a lot of words that me have similar meanings. Um, and I will put in um, peace. And we'll see where we go with this. All right, we've got accord, friendship. Okay, this is more of harmony and agreement. I want to go with calm and serenity. That's kind of my, my angle here. So let's see what we got. We have got um, rest, which is good. Um, you know, it actually occurs to me right now, I did a puzzle at Christmas time that the theme was peace on earth. So I'm not actually going to go in this direction. Sometimes we got to, we got to change direction midway because you don't like to repeat yourself, um, in any way, you know, actually what might be good is self care. Cause that's also a very important thing. Uh, I think at least for me, your self care may be. Um, doing deep breathing, it may be uh, drinking gin and tonics, it may be eating canned ravioli at midnight in this time. That's my personal favorite. Uh, add a little hot sauce to it. But self-care. Um, I don't exactly know what I might do with that. Sometimes if I try to think of a phrase, I try to see if there's a word inherent in my theme word that what I often try to do is when I th have a phrase or an idea, it's one of two ways. Either I'll see some sort of weird thing in a word, um, and I think I could build a puzzle off it. Like, for example, the phrase, no smoking, uh, actually has the word king in it. So then I would try to possibly think of other words that might contain names of suits of cards in it. Um, like, you know, you could have chicken club, and then uh, no smoking. Although... That's not quite as elegant because chicken club, club is its own word already. It's not concealed within another word. So that's also kind of the key in doing a lot of these. You try to 
um, have that that level of inner consistency if you can uh, in your clues and answers. It makes it more elegant. Um, so exploring this idea of self care, what could that mean? Um, <clears throat> actually. There's also self-isolation. I know that's a big thing right now. Or self-isolating. Uh, not really the funnest premise for a puzzle, <laughs> but it's a relevant one. Uh, social distancing. That could be interesting. Um, hmm. So what you could do there is you do a play on social media, and you could take you could break up the name of a social media website. And you could take pieces of it and put them on opposite sides of the puzzle from one another. Yeah, that's got legs. I like that. That's easy to that's easy to execute. You know, Facebook. You know, you could have Facebook, uh, Twi <laughs> or Twitter, um, Insta, Gram, Tick, Talk. Um, there's just a few of them. I'm sure I could do more, but that, that's pretty solid. And then I'd be able to then, in theory, if I get to this point, let me pull this up here. Then I could, in theory, extrapolate from that and, you know, uh, face the music. And, you know, this would be um cookbook or something i don't know I, I had to figure out the particulars of it but yeah i think i think that's what i'm going to go with so i think that will complete this phase of it i'm going to go with social distancing and before i continue i think the one thing i do want to check is this is a, a little technique i do i like to actually have digits 1 through 15, or at least these digits representing it, to see just how long potential um, answers may be, if it can fit within my puzzle, if I need to expand the puzzle beyond the standard 15 by 15, or if I need to uh, shorten it or make it smaller, make it bigger. So I see here social distancing, which I think would make a pretty solid central uh, answer to make, you know, fit the symmetry of a puzzle. Uh, 16 char 16 characters, which is fine. Um, I'm happy doing a 16 puzzle. You know, you you build the grid around the uh, theme you come up with, if it's a good one. Um, and I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to do that. I also think this is probably a pretty solid puzzle idea, because not only are people social distancing in real life, but they're going to really be <laughs> relying on these apps to be able to stay in contact with people. Um, why not? We'll throw, I don't know if Skype would necessarily fit the mold here. Uh, but yeah, we'll go with that. So I think uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go with this theme, social distancing. Yes. So we settle on our theme. I'm going to go with social distancing. Now, I did have an idea about somehow... Um, from my theme answers, using names of social apps, um, Facebook, I'm just going to go with Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and TikTok, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to have some uh, smaller theme answers where the beginning of one starts with the first half of the name of a social media platform, social media site, and that the other, the end of it, is uh, going to be within another one and that they'll be separated. Um, I may have a thing probably where when you do the puzzle, there'll actually be uh, circled squares with circles within them to indicate that once you fill it out, those will have something to do with the theme. Um, so I'm going to do that. But I'm going to first explore what are some interesting possibilities for words that I want to use uh, to, to put these inside of. Um, I'm also going to try to see how well they can, what I call, blend into other words. I like to try to keep them as um, embedded within other words as possible. I don't want them being completely their own words. So, for example, I think I mentioned this could be part of cookbook, but book is really its own separate thing from cook. It can be kind of separated out. So I want, if possible, to have it more elegantly hidden, if you will, within something else. I could even take things a step further 
And rather than simply putting different ends, or, or rather splitting the name of the app into two things, I might actually split it into three pieces and split that out. That opens up more possibilities for interesting fill or theme answers. So for example, I could have, and I don't know if the links are going to work here, but something like factoid placebo and um, A-OK. -okay. <laughs> so those are possibilities, um, which, hey, those aren't actually terrible for what we're doing here. So that means, hmm, you know, I think I'm actually going to decide against that. And the reason is that I like to have long theme answers if possible. I know there's some puzzles where, weirdly, the theme answers are sometimes the shortest ones, or the shortest answers in a puzzle. And the fill um, is the term that's used for all answers in a puzzle that aren't the theme answers. What you'd optimally want to do, or what people are most used to, is having uh, the theme answers be the longest ones um, for the most part. With what I considered here by breaking up Facebook into three different smaller clues, not that I necessarily would use these ones because it's well over 16 characters, but then we run into having lots of little words. So if I had, instead of having face, I would have facet. Um, instead of Ebo, I could have, actually I have gazebo. So exciting watching me type. You know what? Actually, I might have just talked myself into doing that after all. I, could, I do kind of like it. Um, okay. Yeah, what the heck? Why not? We'll roll with it. We'll see what we can do. So I'm going to attempt now. So this might be a weird puzzle. Um, but what I think I will do, however, before I go down too far down that rabbit hole, is I do want to see if there's some interesting other words that um, I could do if I'm going with the, the splitting in two options. So again, if I had face or even FAC, and then I had ebook, which actually is its own word, but uh, I want this to be a little more elegant and hidden in something else. Um, so we'll see. And that way I think, yeah, it just might look a little visually better. So um, let's try this out. Let's see here. Face. And then sometimes you just start entering other um, FaceTime, facetious. Ooh. Oh, facetious. That's what I'm looking for. If you see this, see, optimally, if you're breaking up Facebook into two words and you have face, optimally, whatever you are going to hide face within, if you will, um, doesn't have face within it already. So facetious is excellent. Um, I wanted to go with facet of some kind or faceted, which actually isn't terrible, um, but facetious is a good one. Um, so I'm actually going to go with that, perhaps. So let's try facetious. Now, I won't necessarily go through every single one of the theme answers. I may just show you how I come up with one, um, because we'd be here all night. Uh, <laughs> so book, we've got book to deal with. Now book, I might just have to resign myself to the fact that uh, when you do a Google search, you can't just type in the end of a phrase. So you kind of have to just use your brain and think of what it could be. You could have MacBook. That's actually not terrible. Um, Facetious MacBook. I also like the weird uh, phrases that happen. Oh, that's too much. Um, the weird phrases that happen when you have two uh, long answers next to each other, sort of serendipitously. We could do faceted MacBook. I do like that. And that gives us a little wiggle room because there's two spaces here I can play with. I kind of like that. That's actually pretty good. That feels all right. And again, we are going to end up having probably uh, more medium length um, theme answers in this, but I think I'd rather have that than a sprinkling of little ones and a lot of long fill. So faceted MacBook. I think for now, I think I'm going to go with that. I might end up changing once we actually get into laying out the grid. Might have to see exactly what that looks like, because once I actually get in there and see how everything lays out, I might, you know, change the length of one clue to better match the changes I make to another. I think we'll do one more. Um, again, I like to try to find some symmetry in what I'm doing. So as you can see here, I've got seven letters and faceted is seven letters. MacBook is also seven letters. If I'm able to do seven letter words all around for these, that's great. I think it's totally possible. Um, may need to edit it later on. Um, so twitched, how about twitchy? Ooh, twitchy's great. 
And then also, so a seven letter word ending in T-E-R, well, there's all sorts of those. Um, actually, words ending in T-E-R. There's a great number of websites that allow you to, there we go, more words. More words in the free dictionary are great uh, websites that actually help you find words that include, start with, or end with uh, any letter string, and it's really helpful. Um, it's a good way to cheat at Scrabble, by the way, if you happen to have it in your pocket. So a seven-letter word. Actually, you know what? I actually do prefer, I'm not plugging the site, but I do like the free dictionary. Um, I like how they arrange the answers by length pretty handily, and I want seven-letter words. Boom! Seven-letter words, any and T-E-R, bada-bing. And while I'm here, I'm going to try to find <laughs> um, the most interesting one, um, which now again doesn't necessarily have to be a single word um, because it's only seven letters. Um, there's a lot of things you can play with. Um, I like to try to get what are called the scrabbly letters, which are, I mean, technically every letter is a scrabble letter, but in this particular case, people, when possible, like to have just for the look of it aesthetically, to have as many um, of the high value Scrabble tile letters within a crossword puzzle. So if you can have Z's and X's and Q's, um, you know, K's and J's, you know, if you can have a lot of those. So when possible, I try to um, add those in there, you know, without straining the grid, as it were. Um, but I think just for the, oh, Keister, lovely. We're going to go with Keister because who doesn't love a little butt humor in their puzzle? A twitchy Keister. There we go. So some quality content for our people here. So we have a faceted MacBook and a twitchy keister. Awesome. All right. Well, why not? Let's just let's just go the whole nine yards. I'll just go ahead and fill the rest of it out. Um, instant. Well, that's an easy seven. Oh, pff. and if you know me and you know my penchant for anagrams, we're just going to go ahead and uh, anagram. Boom. So we have an instant anagram. <laughs> A twitchy keister and a faceted MacBook. Now, I should note, I'm not entirely certain how this is all going to actually fit in the grid, but that's the beauty of the exploration of this process. Now, interestingly, TikTok, and I'm okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to show my age here. Like, as far as I know, TikTok is a social app. I know it's all about videos and stuff, but um, I'm just going to put, and forgive me, um, popular social apps. That's right. I'm just double checking. I just want to see if it actually. 10 most popular. Yes, I'm not using Google. I prefer DuckDuckGo. Not not because it's better, but more ethically, it doesn't really... Okay, well, not so much. Okay, so TikTok's not actually YouTube? Hmm. Pinterest, Tumblr. Tumblr's good. LinkedIn. Um, Weibo. I imagine these must be global. Again, showing my... Uh, Showing my um, lack of knowledge about the intricacies of different. Um, might do Reddit. I do like TikTok, though. That's very scrabbly. Social networking times in 2020. All right. Well, enough of me scrolling up and down on this page. Um, I'll throw in YouTube. I'll throw in Reddit. Um, well, the Twitter's crossed off. I don't know what that's about. Sure. I'll add in Tumblr, YouTube, and Reddit just arbitrarily um okay so i think i am going to end it here um but i think i have a pretty good handle on that for now for for the for the batch of answers and again we'll see how it all works out when i actually try to lay out in the grid so um yeah i feel pretty comfortable with this and i'm going to See what's what and get my twitchy keister on or whatever. Instant anagram, faceted MacBook. Um, okay, I'm going to call phase two complete. And after this, we're going to move on to laying out the grid. So uh, after doing a little bit of more research, because I'm so old, and I wanted to verify if TikTok should officially be considered a social media app. I think for the purposes of this puzzle, it's fine, um, from what I've, what I've gathered. I actually realized that you could very easily have the seven-letter theme answer Tiki Bar uh, take care of the tick part and hide it here. 
And then you can have actually the phrase, I'm not okay, hide the talk part. So I'm actually pretty pleased with finding that. So we're gonna go with those, at least primarily. We're gonna see how that all fits. So now I'm going to jump into the piece of software that I use to help create the crossword puzzles that I make for the Comet, as well as my own puzzle blog, and then it's Crossword Compiler. Now, this is the demo version, but uh, you can download it for free and make puzzles on it, but if you want to, uh, I think, uh, download them for later, or edit them otherwise, you need to buy the full version, which is still very affordable. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, out of all these different puzzle options, uh, which you can actually make, <laughs> you can make Sudoku in here, Sudoku, um, as well as other types of puzzles. We're going to go with American style, which means that every letter in the grid uh, appears in at least, or in exactly one across and one down answer. Uh, in cryptic or British crossword puzzles, like I'm hovering over here, uh, those do not. Those uh, have what are called unchecked squares same thing with free form or vocabulary puzzles you might have done those in grade school where you're handed a a sheet that has animals at the zoo or halloween things and they're all just kind of randomly placed so we're going to go with the american style which is also how almost every major um, publication in the u.s does it you can also select the size of our grid and again i'm going to go with a uh, 16 squares wide grid still going to keep it 15 uh tall um, i may bump that to 16 if i need to but um, for now we're just going to go 16 by 15. Uh, that will make the symmetry a little different um, as far as length of clues and where they're placed but it shouldn't affect us too much so we'll click use custom size and then finally you can choose several preset patterns but i'm not going to i'm just going to design the grid myself and as you'll notice in here as you click blank squares it will automatically fill them in like so to create that symmetry um, it's up to you to figure out the best place for your words so i'm going to undo all of those now back to our list here so i'm going to locate the center vertically center of the puzzle and just type it in and there it is, 16 long. But we've entered in our long, uh, what's called the revealer answer, where uh, sometimes when someone creates a crossword puzzle, they will either put the revealer or the kind of the declaration of the theme as the title of the puzzle. Uh, other times you'll have it both in the title of the puzzle, but also in what's called a revealer clue. That usually works well on puzzles where it's really hard to suss out the theme right away, and then that can actually serve as the thing that ties it together. Based on the way that these answers are going to sit with circles around them, I think anybody who starts to fill it out will pretty quickly figure out what's going on, sort of. But I think once they figure out this long clue, it'll all come together. So that's the hope anyway. So the first thing we'll do is experiment and see exactly where uh, we can place these. And the first place often that I like to try is starting on the far left of the grid, uh, in the upper left hand corner three squares down um, because of the rule uh, <laughs> as established in these types of puzzles where there should be no answer that's shorter than three letters that way if i for example typed in faceted <clears throat> faceted excuse me that way right here if i so chose to i could actually block out some squares and have three letter long words here on both sides. So we'll just try that for now. I don't necessarily know how much of that I'm going to black out yet. Now it's interesting because now that we have a 16 square wide grid and I have two seven letter words, that means that I either may put MacBook here, which means I have to black out all these squares. I couldn't just do this because this white space here two letters or it's two spaces that's a no-no so you have to do all three likewise i'd have to do all three in the corners my other option would be to oops, instead 
place MacBook farther over. Oops. But then as a result of that, I would have to do all of these, which is quite a gap um, visually. And I like to try to have as little um, or reduce the amount of large black spaces uh, regarding, you know, clusters of the squares like that. So in that regard, what I think I might actually do now that I'm here, and like I said, once you start laying stuff out, it, um, you might actually be encouraged to change some of the theme answers you decide to put in there, is I'm going to instead, um, I know before I thought facetious might be a good word. Does that fit? No, it's too long. Um, I think what I'm going to do instead is I will do faceted, but I'm going to instead, yeah, let's do that. Now I still might have to do cookbook or something like that. Not really. I might just have to kind of get over myself and just do that. Uh, yeah, for now, we'll just put in cookbook just, just to kind of get a sense of it. So that would mean that over here, whatever I end up putting here, whether it's, it could be twitchy keister for Twitter, it could be instant anagram for Instagram, it could be tiki bar. I'm not okay for um, TikTok. One of those would probably have to change, at least the first word would have to change, um, which is fine. So I'm just trying to think of, were I to change the first word of these three, twitchy, instant, or tiki bar, what would be the most interesting one to change? I like tiki bar as it is. Um, I could look for more tiki related things if I so chose to, but let's go ahead and just throw in um, twitchy keister for now as it is, because I don't really want to, <laughs> I don't want to give that up. That's a good one. Um, note that based on the position of where I put it, um, I don't have to, I, I offset it a little bit. You'll note here, um, but I wanted to give a little breathing room between these long theme answers. Um, it's If you can, it's best to give at minimum a row of fill between your theme answers so that you're not locking yourself into as many constraints as possible regarding which letters must be next to each other. It just frees it up. And again, it's just harder to get a nice clean um, grid if you're doing that. I know that uh, many, if not all, professional crossword puzzlers who regularly have their puzzles published in the New York Times, LA Times, a lot of other publications, there are actually, this program here, Crossword Compiler, uh, allows you to purchase word lists that you may enter into the program, and it will automatically fill uh, all the blank spaces around your theme answers. And the more cool <laughs> or interesting answers that you add, um, the easier it is to make a really interesting crossword puzzle very quickly. I'm a little more artisanal. I mean, as artisanal as you can be using, you know, a computer and, you know, software like this. Um, I don't like to do the autofill option, frankly. I think it takes a lot of the fun out of it. If I were trying to crank out seven puzzles a week or whatever, I could totally see the need to do that. But um, I like to take my time in building them. And I will use... Um, Google, you know, search engines, I will use Wikipedia, just my own brain, the dictionary, lots of different things to help build them. But mostly I'll just, when I'm filling in the fill around the theme answers, I'll just think of words and phrases I already know, and I'll just verify and make sure that they're spelled correctly, if they're popular enough to use, if they're too obscure to use, um, things like that. So for now, uh, we'll go with faceted cookbook, twitchy keister, <laughs> I love that phrase. Um, I think I'm going to put Tiki Bar here, and I'm not okay here, which, I don't know. Uh, we're talking, this whole this whole puzzle's about social distancing and trying to do make yourself feel better. I mean, I'm not okay might actually be a, uh, it might resonate with some folks. I'm sure it will. So uh, we'll leave it in there. Um, I might change that later, but for now, I know it fits. So we'll put anagram here. I don't think I've ever actually included anagram in a puzzle I've made, but here we go. Um, that would mean then, actually, that leaves a couple options. Because I think um, I have a gram here. I could either 
have whatever new word I'm going to use instead of instant. I could either have it start with I-N-S-T-A, because you got Graham here, or I could just do I-N-S-T. I feel like maybe I-N-S-T, um, just because I don't want to, it would be a little sloppy if I left this A alone and duplicated the A here. Um, again, trying to be as elegant as possible um, as far as consistency with how I break the words up. So let's see here. Well, instruct instruct is good. Um, we're going to go to our old friend. I don't know. We'll just go with that for now, I think. Um, yeah. I think that'll be okay. So for now, we're going to go with that. Um, now I'm going to attempt to add in some more black squares and try to kind of build the bones of where I'm going to put the fill. And the trick here is to ensure that there's a good distribution of the length of words throughout. So there's not too many three letter words or there's not too many really long words all jumbled together or clustered together rather. Um, but I also want to make sure that I'm not putting too many constraints on the grid in that, for example, I don't want to force myself, if possible, to have a long theme answer that runs through m that many uh, theme answers. Or rather, I don't want to have a fill answer that runs through that many theme answers, because that way I would be absolutely locked in to having these exact letters in those exact spaces. And the more you do that, the less possible answers you have to work with. So that's this part is actually probably arguably the most crucial part, I think, to me. And sometimes in the doing of this, altering the chosen theme answers um, is critical. So I'm actually going to start filling those out now. And here's what I landed on. Um, I actually decided to go with facetious up here and go with rebook, um, basically as the verb of reschedule something. I liked that because even though book still is, you know, book it, as, as a word, it's it at least has a different meaning um, than in any other version of anything that ended in book that I could find. And I like that not only because it altered that, but that did allow me to open up the word facetious, which I like better. Um, what it also did was it created a new opportunity down here where I now have insect and pentagram, which again... <laughs> I mean, who out there when doing, you know, trying to summon the Dark Lord hasn't created an insect pentagram? Am I right? Um, and so I'm really trying to bring that into the crossword puzzle realm. So in also placing these words, um, I entered in black squares um, throughout the grid to try to find, again, that balance of having a fair amount of words that didn't span uh, hopefully no more than two theme answers. Um, however, that does create a few spots um, that I'm going to have to investigate a little bit. For example, I do have two long down answers here and here that do span three of them. And there's really no good place for me, at least the way I've done it here, to split that up and change it. Um, I could figure it out with some more um, trial and error. And that's a lot of creating a crossword grid is just trial and error, basically. Um, so I am going to attempt it. And in that regard, um, I'm going to bring up my good friend uh, crosswordtracker.com, which is my biggest friend. Let me pull it up here in uh, creating puzzles. Now, ostensibly, crosswordtracker.com is used for people who are solving crossword puzzles, but it actually is a huge database online, uh, basically of, as far as I can tell, every answer and clue for every published crossword puzzle in major publications going back to the 1950s. I mean, it really starts with the New York Times, but it also has LA Times, um, I want to say the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, tons of other online only crossword puzzles. So many times if I am trying to ver verify if a word that I entered um, is used often enough or isn't too obscure, I'll go here. Um, 
What I'll also do is, what really the valuable part of it is, is that you can enter in word patterns where you're missing letters. I think there's various um, Scrabble helper uh, apps and programs that let you do the same thing. But it's absolutely critical because it at least will show you if any words or rather any answers have ever appeared before um, in, in a crossword puzzle. So I'm going to try that now um, with this one. So if we can remember it, uh, I just have to kind of look at it and remember. But so I look at the number of blank squares and the number of letters. So I will say to myself, 2i1c2l. 2i1c2l. So I'll enter that in here. 2, whoops, I can try to anyway. Let's see, 2i1c2l. You have to enter in a um, question mark or a space for every square that's blank, and then it will hopefully uh, provide an answer that shows. Ah, and look at that. So, in the history of <laughs> major published crossword puzzles, there have been five answers that fit the pattern I had here. Spit curl, mail call, acid cell, I don't quite know what that is, uh, jail cell, and hair cell. It's acid cell, I'm just curious. Battery park, okay. Okay, that makes sense. I also learned some things uh, in here, and it'll include the clue that went with it, as well as, I think, what publication it was in, so... Again, I use this all the time. This is sort of um, computer programs like Crossword Compiler will draw from a word list. This is basically where I go. But as neat a tool as this is, it still takes a really, really long time sometimes <laughs> to do this. I'll have five or six different tabs open trying to fill different spots and go back and forth. So um, so we know that um, spit curl is kind of cool. Um, let me throw that in there and see how that works. Oops. So let's see here. So spit curl. Um, it's got a U. It's a vowel. It fits well there. That creates some opportunities here. I'm always also looking for trying to think two and three, two and three moves ahead to figure out what kind of letters will need to fit around the letters I put in there. So there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of thinking ahead, going back. But for now, we'll throw that in there. Mail call actually feels a little safer um, just because with the A and the, basically the A's and the L's are very versatile uh, consonants and vowels, as it were. U's are pretty tricky. Weirdly enough, if you've played Scrabble, you'll know that if you get a U or a C, you just want to get rid of them. Same thing in crossword puzzles if you can help it. So we'll go with mail call for now. Um, the other long one that I had my eyes on was this one which I'm just going to have to remember, A2, N1, T2. So I will enter in A1, N2, T2. Hopefully I got that correct. And sure enough, we have all sorts of answers here. Uh, it will often arrange the most often used or the least obscure answers first, or at least it should anyway. Um, agnostic, that's solid. Um, amniotic. Interesting. Um, Annette's, mm, that's a little weird. Try to avoid plurals of proper names if you can. Uh, Anna Sten, what is even that? She played Nana in Nana. Silent film actress, wow. Okay, well, I don't doubt that there was a silent film master actress named Anna Sten, but uh, no. <laughs> a little too obscure. Agnostic is fair, um, so we're going to roll with that. And actually, G is pretty good. Oh, nope, you know what? Another example of why you got to be careful when you enter it in. I had it wrong. So it's actually A2N1T2. A2N1T2. Ah, okay. No, it doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. It will list words that have been used. But if they're really obscure, I don't care that seven or eight puzzles have used... Ab initio or ab initio. <laughs> That's Latin for from the beginning. Apparently it was used by the Wall Street Journal just over a year ago. Okay, cool. Well, I'm not really going to do that. Um, so what that does mean is I'll need to probably go back and tweak some things in the puzzle. Um, so this is the part where, yeah, it takes a little back and forth. I think the next time you see it, um, I should have the puzzle grid completely filled in. 
And then the final video will probably be me doing some clues. So we'll go from there. Okay. So as you can see, I actually did successfully work with the four theme answers that I had chosen. I had to move some things around. I had to change some of the words that I had selected to go in there. For example, twitchy keister didn't work out as much as I wanted to make it given the time that I had. So twitchy theater, although I will say, if you were in a theater right now, you might feel a little twitchy if you heard someone coughing. Um, TikTok worked out. I was very pleased. I managed to do Tiki Bar and I'm Not Okay, which, again, uh, is a lively in-language phrase. I know that's a term that's actually used quite a lot when doing crossword puzzles, if it's in-language. If it's a colloquial phrase that's used, um, those ones are of high aesthetic value in uh, a lot of crossword puzzles. And I wasn't able to do Insect Pentagram, uh, but I did Insult Pentagram, which... Feels like, I don't know, that feels very Kirby Enthusiasm Seinfeld to me, or The Office, but, you know, if they're performing some sort of rituals. Um, uh, I did have to move some of the words around to get the letters to line up. Particularly, you might notice here, um, right in this section, where I have the second half of Book from Facebook and the Tur from Twitter. They're close in proximity, and for whatever reason, I originally had this word here that ends in Tur farther to the right. And so I had these three letters in circles lining up with the OOK in book. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't elegantly uh, get many words to really fit in there nicely. And of course, if you make a change in the one corner, symmetrically, you have to make a change in the other corner. So I ended up doing kind of a rework of the entire grid. Um, leaned heavily on both crossword um, tracker as well as Google. But I use my good old brain. Um, and there are a few surprises in uh, some of the things that came up. For example, uh, the long answer here, Olympia Wa, uh, which you would see on a piece of postage from uh, Washington State's capital, um, is a great um, fit there. And it also helped create some very clean down clues for the most part. Um, whenever you're creating a puzzle, you want to have as few abbreviations or clunky suffixes or partial phrases as you can for three-letter words. So if you can actually have either really tight uh, three-letter acronyms, like NYC, that's pretty flawless. Um, I did do TMs, which is the plural for trademarks. Eh, it's a little crossword easy, but I'm okay with it. Um, but you have the words awe and mad there on the bottom. So I was pretty pleased with it. Also, PDF up here in the corner. I was pretty happy with that, how that came out as well. Um, so yeah, and social distancing spans the grid in the center, um, tying it all together. So what I'm going to do now is just do a little bit, not all of them, but just a little bit of creating some of the clues for these. Um, yes, there is uh, a little bit of a method to it. Um, the key really to creating effective clues for a puzzle is to try to find the balance between um, f clues that are relatively easy to get, because you don't want them all to be, you know, absolute unsolvable riddles and puns. You want to have some that are just sort of gimmies, if you will. Um, but you also want to have some that, if you know you have a hard or obscure answer, uh, for example, down here, 64 down, I settled on that. The answer is UBS. That's actually the name of, I think, a Swiss bank. It's well known. I've seen commercials for it, but it's not like everybody's banking there. So I made sure that all the crosses with it are words that are pretty common and that the clue to it is going to be pretty explicit. You want to be sure you don't have too many of those. <laughs> Because if you fill the grid with a bunch of obscurity, while they are technically correct and they've technically been in New York Times crossword puzzles before, it does not a pleasant solving experience make. And then finally, you of course want to try to have those um, those punny, um, cruel uh, clues that uh, definitely lead to misdirection. You want to be able to have a nice, fair, but hard misdirection in a clue. I still think the one that I, the two that I'm most proud of, and again a little crossword geekery here, because well look at me, um, the clue was volume setting, and the answer was bookstore, 
And the other clue I came up with was diesel delivery in space. And the answer was, I am Groot. And um, yes, I'm pleased with myself that I <laughs> stumbled upon those. If you can't toot your own own punning horn, who will? Anyway, um, to that point, so let's just dive into a few here. Um, and for this particular software, we're going to go to Clue. And we'll go into Review Edit Clues. And what it'll bring up is this handy little screen here where you will actually see a list of all of your various clues here. And I'm actually going to go to the down clue. Uh, let's see here. Sacrifice. So, for example, you could, in this particular program, it actually has some preset answers, which is helpful if you're trying to knock out a very quick puzzle. So if you double-click it, um, well, it actually isn't offering me up anything. Interesting. Um, let me find an example here, maybe C. There we go. So you'll notice here, in the database for the demo version, it actually has several possible clues that you could just automatically fill it in with. If you just wanted to save time, you could have the word expanse, you could have um, yellow for one, last word of America, the beautiful, Caribbean, etc. Um, for the heck of it, for now, I'll just do Caribbean, etc. Why not? So the word sacrifice, let's try that one. Now, rather than doing something sort of grim, um, you could say something like uh, altar offering or something, you know, really... Fun. Of course, we have we have pentagram below. So if I really wanted to go in the occult uh, direction there, I could. But here I'm going to change it up a little bit. And thinking of the term uh, sacrifice fly in baseball. So that gives us an opportunity to play around with it pun wise, because of course the word fly can mean many other things. So we could say something like fly found in a park. And you wouldn't say what park, that's kind of the part of the clue. Or you could say fly um, aloft in a park. And then that would satisfy the answer there. Um, also, if there's ever a name, you try to find a good balance of... Because again, there's, I'm sure, more than one famous Trent. Um, there's more than one famous Rob. More than one famous Stacy. So you try to find not only those who might be most uh, relevant or popular at the time, or historically relevant, but also a nice balance of interesting. You don't want all of the answers to be baseball players, or you don't want all the answers to be soap opera actors. I don't think that would ever happen. But So here, I'm probably going to go with something like um, Resner of Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Um, now let's see here. We've got ourselves the Raven. Uh, I know... Uh, this is uh, a little nod, uh, tip of the cap, to uh, Mr. Ron Evans here, as he is a uh, major Poe fanboy. I think that's fair. I think that's fair to say, Poe fanboy. Um, I was thinking, I don't know if I'm going to go this route, because sometimes the puns don't quite work out the way you want to. I've always noticed that, for example, um, I wanted to say Poe try, question mark, and you'll notice that Poe try is also has the same letters in sequence as poetry, um, but it's a little obscure um, because that would sort of, it, it's weird to parse grammatically. And also, I wouldn't necessarily call the finished product of the Raven a try at anything. I'd say he pretty much nailed it, whatever he was going for there. So um, I may say something as you know bland as, not bland, but just basic as um, famous Poe poem or something like that and I always come back to it as with anything that you write um, never stop on your first pass of anything always come back to it um, uno again could be a lot of things I like classic card game um, well if it'll do it let's try that again classic card game for uno there we go um, so anything else that jumps out let's see here um, Tots might be good. 5K. A lot of times I'll jump out. I will look for terms that I'm excited to write a clue for. Sometimes that doesn't happen. I also will look for the clues that most need the most explanation. For example, uh, Oogie. I can go two ways with this. I can either reference the song um, Boogie Oogie Oogie. <laughs> Um, the 70s song, but I might actually do this. I might go 
um, blank boogie, and I'll go villain from the nightmare before Christmas. Um, I always feel a little conflicted on answers and clues that are rhyming or are, you know, one basically leaves away the other, or even the boogie actually even includes the answer, but it's fair game. Nothing saying you can't do it. It's not literally the same thing. So, um, and also I don't really have a much more elegant way to get Oogie in there, but it's a legit answer and it fits. Um, yeah, let's see anything else. Uh, one thing also is if you ever do happen upon, and I don't think I have that in this puzzle, I might, where you actually have two answers that form a two-word phrase, um, it's fun to kind of play off of that, if you can. It's not necessary, but it, in a way it feels like if you were doing a puzzle and you noticed that there were two answers that could form a two-word phrase and the creator of the puzzle didn't somehow link them in a clue, um, you know, you might go, oh man, they totally missed an opportunity to do that. I'm probably the schmuck who does that kind of thing. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's see here. An arrow. Um, sometimes if you have a foreign language clue, sometimes it helps to use part of that language within the clue itself. I know the go-to for this I often do is first mess of the año. I will need to go back and put an actual tilde over the N to be authentic. Um Anything else that's jumping out at me? Uh, a partial clues. It's important to also, um, let's see here. Yeah, partial clues are critical in filling out. Let's see here. Actually, crossword tracker is what I want. There we go. I looked it up before. I don't remember what I had, but in our. Peace in our time. That's right. So we might just go with our, that phrase. In Our Time by Hemingway. Peace in Our Time feels pretty generic, so we'll just do that. So again, it's important. I also go after the partial phrases first just to get them out of the way because there's not a lot of room you can do with playing around with the clues, trying to make them punny or interesting. Um, so I may just do... Two, three, nine. Nice to think about that. Um, yeah, I think so overall, that is um, the basics. Let me close it. I'll go back and fill this out later. And um, eventually, once they're all in place, I'll do one more read of it, make sure that it's up to snuff. Um, put it into layout uh, for the puzzle page for the comet. Make sure that everything fits on the page. And make sure that I can also fit it on with the previous <laughs> previous uh, issues answers, as well as any additional puzzle. And there it is. Um, and usually, uh, depending upon the amount of time that I have available to me um, and the amount of focus that I can have, because it's a lot easier to write when you have the brain power to do it and you're not exhausted, but I can knock out a puzzle like this usually anywhere from one to three days, uh, assuming I have the time a couple hours at a time, like I did with this one. So pretty happy with how quickly it went. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, about how to create a crossword puzzle or how I do it, if there's any other uh, ideas for puzzles uh, that you'd like to see or other questions I didn't address here, um, you can always contact me at cscxwords at gmail.com. So thank you for watching and take care. <laughs>